Okay, so I finished reading Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. And this has taken me too long to make because every time I try to talk about it, I feel like I keep going off on tangents. So this is what we'll do, right? So this is what we'll do. I will start by <sighs> summarizing. Summarizing is going to be doing a lot of heavy lifting, but I'm going to be summarizing the first chapter and the prologue. Just the first chapter and the prologue. So, <laughs> whatever the length of this video is, yeah, that's just me describing the prologue and the first chapter. And then after I do that, I will go into my review, like an actual proper review. But I do need to start like... Because when I tell you what happens in the first chapter, and there's a, it's a big, big spoiler warning at this point. But when I tell you what happens in the first chapter, it's so much wildness and it's so like intriguing that when I tell you what the given synopsis of the story is, you'll understand why I had to do it this way. I'm doing it this way so that you actually go read the book. <laughs> I'm doing this I'm doing it this way so that more people actually go read the book because I highly, highly recommend it. Hi everyone, I need to cut in here. Before I start, there are major spoilers here for quite a while. Hopefully I added chapters to the video, but here's the timestamp if you want to skip straight to my thoughts. Also, content warning for the following sexual assault, rape, violence, death child neglect and the sexualization of minors. I'd also recommend not reading the book if stuff like that triggers you. The story gets really hectic at points. Okay, sorry to harsh the mood. It's really good still, I promise. Okay, let's go. Okay. The Pillars of the Earth is a 983 page piece of work, right? Okay. We start at an unnamed town where there's an execution happening, right? Okay. The dude being executed, and it's hangings in this case, it sets in 1130 roundabouts. The dude being executed is like a stranger to the town like no one really knows him so no one really knows how to feel about the hanging let me read a little paragraph the mood of the crowd was odd normally they enjoyed a hanging the prisoner was usually a thief and they hated thieves with the passion of people whose possessions are hard earned but this thief was different nobody knew who he was or where he came from he had not stolen from them, but from a monastery 20 miles away, and he had stolen a jeweled chalice, something whose value was so great that it would be virtually impossible to sell, which was not like stealing a ham or a new knife or a good belt, the loss of which would hurt someone. They could not hate a man for a crime so pointless. There were a few jeers and catcalls as the prisoner entered the marketplace, but the abuse was half-hearted and only the small and only the small boys mocked him with any enthusiasm. Like he he had me there, he can have me there. Anyway, so like I said, they don't really know this guy, so they're not really like excited or anything. The people accusing him are a monk. Hold on, hold on, let me get my notes. The people accusing him are a, a monk, a knight, and a priest. The dude they're accusing can't speak English, so he can't really defend himself. So people start noticing that there's a, a young girl in the crowd. She's like 16 at this point. 
she has golden eyes and she's pregnant and she seems to be the only one who's upset about the whole thing so they're like oh, okay so he must be the baby daddy that's kind of sad so the dude gets hung and then the girl's like really sad and then she sings a sad song and then she curses the monk the knight and the priest and then she kills a chicken and then she throws it at them and they get blood on their clothes and she's an icon she's an icon but that's where we read the prologue that's our interest in the book great chapter one starts we see tom tom builder tom builder is a mason he travels with his family to and from towns because his ambition is building a cathedral but to survive he has to like work on like castles and that kind of thing he's in i can't remember where but he's in let's say a county right where a dude is gonna get married to the earl's daughter a lord's daughter is getting married to an earl's daughter and they're both young so everyone's like okay cool whatever so tom's working with the other builders to build this dude's new house it's gonna be like a castle great they're having lunch Tom is there with his family because in the middle medieval ages apparently you had to take your family everywhere. So he's there with his family. This consists of him, Agnes, his wife, Martha, his seven-year-old daughter, and Alfred, his 14-year-old son. Right? They're having lunch, and then Agnes says, I'm pregnant, and then Tom's like, oh, okay, that's chill. And then He's like, okay, let me do the calculations. We'll probably be done by like December and then we'll have a bit of money as like a pillow and then we can move around until I find another job. No, that's cool. Then someone comes and then he's like, yo, stop working, guys. The Earl's daughter rejected the dude and they like rejected him, but she's a woman. And then he's like, yeah, um, her dad agreed that like if she doesn't want to marry someone, then she won't be forced to. And then everyone's like, oh, okay. And then Tom's panicking because he's like, oh, uh, I mean, I, I have a kid on the way. I have a kid on the way. What am I going to do? Then the dude that they're building the house for appears and he's like mad. And he's, I was about to say driving his horse. His horse is like galloping down the road and Tom's daughter Martha was like playing in the road and the dude almost kills her and then like Tom saved her at the last minute and then Tom like pissed about it. He's like, yo, who, who the hell is this? So then the dude's like, okay, where's your boss? And then Tom shows up. He's like, <laughs> dude, we got a problem. And then dude's like, okay, all of you leave, fine, get out, I, 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 get out. And then Tom's like, no, pay us first. And then the dude's like, I'm gonna kill you. And then Tom's like, okay, you can kill me. Wait, I have to read the line. Hold on. So Tom's like, pay us first, then kill me. You may hang for it, or you may not, but you'll die sooner or later, and then I will be in heaven, and you will be in hell. Ooh, that was cold, that was cold, that was cold, that was cold. Anyway, that works for reasons that will kind of be explained later, even though they're not that. But anyway, it work, It works. The dude panics, and he's like, okay, I don't want to go to hell. Um, I'll pay you guys, whatever so they're safe for now because they have like a week's wages or something but tom's still like okay we need to make a plan right so here's the plan and they enact this plan until a point when we catch up with them whatever so a bit of a time skip 
what they did is they stayed in that county through the summer and they worked and worked and worked they saved up enough money to buy a pig and then they fattened the pig right so the pig was worth quite a lot and then they were like okay we're gonna fatten the pig and then we're gonna go to the nearest town and sell the pig there and then we'll get quite a bit of money from that we'll be able to survive the winter and then keep looking for work and well like but we'll have like a bit of money to lean back on cool that is their plan right so they do that they work they work they buy the pig and then they're traveling to the town they're traveling through the woods while they're traveling through the woods um three dudes attack martha martha was leading the pig they attack her and then club her and then she falls down so tom and alfred go off to the thieves and they beat up two of them but the third gets away with the pig they go back to where agnes is sitting with martha and when they get back there there's a lady and her kid there the kid has red hair the lady has golden eyes she's she's the one who pretty much revived martha and she's like no she'll be okay blah 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 and then she was like yeah those dudes were outlaws i'm also an outlaw and then he's like you're an outlaw she's like yeah i cursed the priest and then she was like no she was like yeah i cursed the priest and he was like okay and then they sit down and have lunch and then she tells them her backstory this lady's name is ellen her son's name is jack ellen was the daughter of a knight and he was a single dad because his wife died so she grew up around men and she grew up like being vulgar and all stuff like them but then as soon as she grew boobs all the men around her turned creepy and then her dad was worried like oh i can't have my daughter be a sexual being so he was like okay get thee to a nunnery get thee to a nunnery go so she goes to the nunnery she escapes three times and then the third time she's like okay okay fine i'll stay here so she stays there until she meets a redhead dude and then she runs away with him then she gave birth to her child alone in the woods and tom makes notes that like she skips over the details about the dad like she's just like oh i really love that dude but like she doesn't really tell what happened to him or anything we know of course because like we just saw the prologue but like she doesn't explain it to tom as she's talking to him but she gave birth in the woods alone and since she's cursed the priest she's an outlaw so she and her son jack live in the woods and she and her son jack live in the woods they hunt to survive they don't really need money she's educated because she was a nice daughter so like she teaches her son jack stuff but jack i love jack can i oh, i'm gonna interject with that i love i love jack on your divergent king but okay but jack is a little awkward because he hasn't had much time to socialize with other people and not other children jack is i believe 12 years old at this point so it's like 12 years after the prologue so jack is around 12 years old but he's like kind of odd he like asks rude questions you know he stares that kind of thing so okay they're a bit of an odd couple but like whatever she's nice also it needs to be noted that from like from the moment tom saw her he was like oh she's hot i wonder what's under that dress and that's not me exaggerating that's pretty much what he thinks and i'm like um oh, your wife is right here and even agnes like gets a bit jealous like oh okay a younger woman or whatever it's cool but like there's a bit of this it makes me uncomfortable how he talks about her 
like he's like oh those golden eyes are resting maybe she'll see that i'm horny that kind of thing like it's a mm, i'm like this is this is a stranger unless that's that's how whatever it's weird but like i'll let that hang there that tom was very attracted to ellen from the get-go like from the moment he saw her right but it was more so physical attraction cool at the end after her story after she tells them how they survive and stuff she's like um the nearest the nearest city is it a town or a city i don't know but the nearest place is salisbury i heard they're building a cathedral there you can go check it out maybe they'll give you a job so i was like thanks agnes is like thanks it's cool they leave agnes is like i saw i'm a cute poet so they go to the town and tom arrives and then they like led on a goose chase to find the master builder so they find him and then tom asks him for a job he's like sorry i ain't got a job for you and then tom's like dejected like okay they have to like they'll have to move somewhere else to find a job but while they're leaving well not when they're leaving the town when they're leaving the cathedral and going through like the poor neighborhoods they walk past the butcher and see their pig and they're like at the butcher like yo what's good why do you got a pig and then the butcher's like oh some dude just sold it to me and they were like it's our pig so what are we gonna do now and then the butcher's also like what are we gonna do now because they can't really prove that it's their pig even though like the the outlaw who stole it is like probably was probably dodgy enough that the butcher was like but but he's like nah i'm not gonna give you any money go find the dude sort it out amongst yourselves and then they're like okay so the dude's probably gonna be at a whole house or something you they were like you 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 they divide themselves up and like we'll all wait at the gates to the city and then whichever way he goes um i'll send a message and then you come you guys come meet me and then we'll jump him together cool so they wait they wait and then he, he's coming towards the gate where tom is so they all get together and then as a family they jump him and it's, it's a very triumphant moment so then they knock him out and then Tom digs in his pockets and then he opens his purse nothing in there so it's very unfortunate that that was very dejecting even for me I was like oh no also the dude's dead but like that's that's beside the point the point is they couldn't get their money back time skip to the middle of winter it's Christmas they're starving like proper proper like starving like malnutrition starving and agnes is very very pregnant at this point they've been walking from town to town while well, tom looks for a job but it's it's like a recession type of vibe at this point like there are no jobs available for tom and he hasn't been able to work in months and so they're on the, like their last legs and they've been begging for food and stuff and they have like the most meager amounts of food left so they camp in the woods at night let me remind you it's the middle of winter agnes goes into labor panic yeah what what happened there's no there's no one nearby as far as they know like the last place they left they left it like in the morning and it's night time so there's no one nearby as far as they know and it's like a bit of panic and then he's like okay you know what we can do this we can do this so they do what they can and then 
Agnes delivers the baby. And the baby is healthy and he's pink. It's a boy. And it's cute and it cries. And it was so <sighs> It was sweet for a moment. And then Agnes doesn't stop bleeding. And then Agnes dies. This is a genuinely emotional moment in the book. It's genuinely emotional. At the same time, you don't really have time to like recover from this major character death because of whoo, because of everything that's about to happen next. Okay. All in the span of hours. All in the span of hours. Okay. Agnes dies. Tom and Alfred bury her. Tom's like guys we can't afford to keep this baby like it's either gonna starve here or it's gonna starve with us so let's just leave it here and then maybe a wolf or something will come eat it and then it, it is, its suffering will end and then Martha and Alfred are like whoa but okay dad so they walk away from the baby and leave it like on its mother's grave a bit like a mile away tom stops and he's like no worries we can't just leave the baby there and they're like okay let's go back then so they go back but the baby's gone and then tom panics he's like no we'll be able to find it so they like stumble through the woods and then so they like stumble through the woods keep in mind they're still starving and at this point they haven't slept in how many hours and Tom's kind of delusional in a like delusional state right so the kids like they all collapse basically like they sit down to rest but like they, ba they basically collapse and then it gets and then it gets weirder Tom has a dream that an angel comes to him and the angel strips her clothes and she's naked but she's hot and then she kisses him so they do the do and then he wakes up and then he realizes it wasn't a dream and the angel was actually Ellen now as much as I like Ellen how do we reconcile with with what just happened to her? Because he doesn't mind. Because again, he was attracted to Ellen from the get-go. So he doesn't really mind. That doesn't mean it wasn't. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he wakes up and he realizes it wasn't a dream and it was Ellen. And then Ellen's like, at, at the very least, Tom has a moment of thinking, this is all insane. Like he has a moment where he's like, this is wild. This is all happened. Like in the past few hours, my wife died. My, I abandoned my son and i just slept with this lady i met like a month ago so so it's it's what it's wild at least he recognizes that i can appreciate that <laughs> he recognizes how crazy the situation is but then ellen wakes up and then she's like no jack saw who took your kid and i think i know where he is come with me so she and Tom go through the woods and then they come upon a monastery in the woods and there's a guy like holding the baby and feeding it goat's, goat's milk through a cloth and then Tom's like oh that's, that's genius oh oh that's genius they're so clever and Tom's about to like make himself known and then Ellen's like you can't you, you can't make yourself you can't tell them you're the dad and Tom's like why not 
And then she's like, because you left the baby there to die and that's murder and they're going to kill you. And then he's like, fair points. And then she's like, in any case, in any case, the baby's going to do better with the, the monks than it would with you, right? Like you said, y'all are going to starve. So why not just leave the baby there with the monks and at least you know that he's going to be kept warm, he's going to have food and stuff, he'll get educated. And so it's sad, but Tom's like, okay, you're right. And so they leave the baby at that monastery in the woods. They go back to the cave and then Ellen feeds the kid. She gives everyone warm clothes to wear. And then she says, I fell in love with you the first day I met you. And I want to stay with you because my son needs a dad and then Tom's like in his head Tom's like okay my wife literally just died I literally just washed her blood off my hands but then the chapter ends with him proposing to her and that's the first chapter of Pillars of the Earth Pillars of the Earth or Pillars of the Earth? Yes, the Pillars of the Earth so what is the pillars of the earth about <laughs> it is about <laughs> the pillars of the earth is about building cathedrals in the middle ages not the middle ages medieval times um and that's the only way i can really describe it because I read that on the blurb, it says something like that. Something like um, the cathedrals that were built in the 1100s and the turbulent times surrounding them. I read that, I was like, how could this be interesting? And yet, and yet, not only do I have a wealth of knowledge about cathedrals that I do not need to know, but like it was fascinating like it's 900 and whatever jam-packed pages like it's so long but you never get bored it was a page turner it was excellent it was excellent i have to recommend it to anyone and everyone it was insane and that's just the first chapter mind you that's why i had to like that's just the first chapter and I've been speaking for, I don't know how long it is in the video. And okay, it's time to get more articulate again. What did I love about this book, right? I like that it's exciting. I like that it's a page turner. I like that, like I said, I appreciate that Tom recognized the wildness of the situation. And it's a weird thing to point out, but you know how in, like in, well, not just literature, but like in media surrounding medieval times, middle ages, that time period, they treat like these dark things that would happen on the regular, child mortality and murder and stuff they treated like you know it was common so like people wouldn't bet an eye if it happened but in this book people get affected by things people get traumatized people mourn deaths they grieve and, and also they age like no one besides uh ellen having been 16 when she was pregnant no one there's no like underage sex or anything like that so it's all quite and and they they criticize young marriages like there's a 14 year old girl who gets married and someone's like oh it's so sad that she's so young and she has to be married like the normal people you know it, it's it it connects you in this time period to them because it's like even then even when the the life expectancy was like in the 30s they were still like normal people and it was still tragic for someone to die young it was still tragic to lose someone 
it was still infuriating to be stolen from and it was still like infuriating to to see injustice happening and not be able to do anything about it you feel very connected to each of the characters that you experience the story through that's another thing i like is that it's not just that it follows the peasants and it's not just that it follows nobility you follow tom you follow the earl's daughter you follow william oh william is the dude who got dumped you follow a monk and you follow a surprise like it was a surprise to me when we switched to his perspective i was like ah it's my boy but you follow a variety of perspectives from all different social classes as they fall in class and as they rise in class and so and that's a great thing because you get to see all the sides of the time period like you get to you get to see characters interact with literally the king of england but at the same time you get to see what like peasants were going through what the serfs and the peasants and the working man were going through as well as surprisingly the politics of the church i mean it shouldn't be surprising because it's like of course the politics of the church was a major major deal at the time but like really intricately written politics of the church like the, the church had loki the most interesting politics going on like i didn't care what was going on with like the big the big picture and like the they're fighting for the crown whatever like i don't really care about all that but i wanted to know like okay who's gonna be who's gonna be the new priest who's gonna oh what's going on here like it was so intriguing it was so intriguing so well written and all the characters are excellent as well even the antagonist he's oh he's the worst he's the worst he's he's practically cartoonishly evil actually and yet he's like so good at being bad that you like how he's written but you hate him like you, you can't like him he's not like a likable bad guy he's just ter he's just terrible you just have to hate him but it's like he's so so he's so bad he's just so so just clear-cut black and white evil that it's like it's refreshing it's a bit refreshing we don't always need an anti-hero i don't always need to sympathize with the villain and we even like we, we even see his evil deeds through his perspective so yeah that in that way i liked him as a character but don't say don't take me saying i liked him as a character as me saying i like his character no there's no way to like him like he's just the worst he's the worst he's the worst tom was right someday they'll die and tom will be in heaven and he will be in hell what else oh and i do like the length I'm the type of person who likes reading really long books and I know that can be intimidating for a lot of people but I have to say with this one in particular you really don't notice the time going by like before you know it you're halfway through and before you know it you're done and begging for more. Interestingly enough this book is the first of like a trilogy and there's a recently published prequel interestingly enough i thought like okay because i read um a different series trilogy by him um the century trilogy and it all takes place with like pretty much the same characters and their descendants so i thought okay they're going to continue from this cast of characters in the next book but I get the feeling that because the next book sets in like set 300 or so years later. So even though it's part of a series, it's an epic on its own. You know, it's 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 its own fully fledged out, complete story. And there are no loose endings. You know, they tie up all loose ends. He ties up all loose ends and 
you'll leave the book feeling satisfied, feeling vindicated, feeling bittersweet that it's over, and feeling bittersweet that you have to say goodbye to these characters that you really connected with over 900 pages, you know, however long it takes you to read that. It took me like two weeks. I mean, in the time that it took reading it, because it took technically like two months but like it's mainly because i got busy with work and then i'd have to like stop reading and then i get back into it and read 300 pages or something like that but it really doesn't take long to read and i really 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 recommend it i really really do so yeah that was just me talking about this book i read yeah it really has taken me too long to get this out and it's like i keep trying to tackle this topic and it's like i wanted to summarize the entire story but then i saw how long it was taking me just to summarize the first chapter and i was like uh okay okay so so let's just cut it down if you're still here, thank you for listening. If you read this book, tell me what you think. If you're intimidated by big books, then tell me what you think of <laughs> me recommending a 900 page book. I mean, it has its people, you know, it has its people. Um, I don't know what else to tell you to comment for engagement. Ah, whatever. With all that said...